All right, so now with the barrel work completed, well, the turning work on the lathe, there's another operation to do. So with the spring field and the end fields, um, they have these giant extractors on them. So with the extractor off, the bolt will close because there's no interference, but with this on, now they won't close. So what we got to do is cut a slot in the breech end for the extractor there. So what we got to do is unscrew the action from the barrel. So we're just going to do an archaic form of marking this. I'll just put a little dicum in the in the breech. Just uh, just so we can see the marks. And it's another reason I polish this really well because it'll show a, show a mark and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Okay, so we'll just kind of lightly coat the cone kind of where that extractor sits on the right side, on this side. So that should be plenty there. Let that dry. And so my marking tool is simply a piece of cold rolled steel with a 45 degree grind in it to uh, give me something sharp. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna get it as tight as I can by hand because of course the, the torquing is going to turn on just a slight bit more than I could get it. But, uh, so we'll, we'll cut it a little bit wider than the marks. So yeah, I've simply fed this in with the uh, wedge or the, the marking location on the bottom here. Fits right in there. And so, touching the, the breech end of the barrel, we're just going to give it a little knock. And you can see right there, it's taking a little chunk out of that. And then we're going to go on the top, do the same thing. Make sure we're sitting flat. And then one more on the uh, bottom right, or left side, bottom left side, just to kind of make sure we're level and everything. All right. Okay. So we've got marks now for our location. Bottom top right and then bottom left so that just helps us when we're cutting the uh cutting the extractor itself in the uh, milling machine okay so now there's some calculations to do to figure out how much di how deep we need to cut this uh slot okay so now we're going to measure down from the face of the receiver to the nose of the extractor. So from here to the extractor itself installed in the bolt. And then do a little calculating to get our depth. So as always, we'll make sure the bolt's in the rearward position all the way closed. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a depth micrometer and just measure down to that. 570 is the measurement there. All right, so we'll record that. 0 0.570. And so now we take our thread extension length as it is, which is 
0.727 minus the measurement we just took, minus 570, 0 0.570. And then you add about 20 thousandths to it for clearance. So plus 0 0.020 equals 177. The 177 is the depth that we're be, we'll be cutting in the barrel for clearance of this extractor. And then, gonna need the width of it, which is easy to do. We'll just measure the, literally the width. 395, we'll call it 400. All right. And I've got a special cutter, a PC cutter for this job. So this is simply a cutter that spins in the milling machine spindle and gives us that um, relief groove. And the cutter measures 375-ish. So we're going to have to make a cut and come up and down to kind of widen that out. Okay, so we got all our numbers, 0.177. So we'll go over to the mill, get all that set up, and make that cut. So with the barrel and action roughly installed in the mill, now we have to level this uh, to get that cut somewhat level. So to do that, we'll just hold something flat on the bottom flat of the action. Sorry, my hands are probably in the way. And get that relatively level, not critical here. And the thing's gonna get torqued on slightly more, so I'm gonna leave it a little proud to the unscrew position because screwing this in will definitely give us a, just a titch more. So something like that, because when it's all clamped up in the barrel vise and we give it about 100 foot-pounds of torque, uh, that's going to turn on just slightly more than I can get it by hand. Okay, so let's check, make sure this is level this way. Okay, tool is roughly in position. So to start, I'm going to choose the top portion, got that, get that cut, and then raise the table however many more we need to, to uh, get the width established. Um, so this is kind of uh, done by eye. There's not a whole lot of super uh, precise ways of doing this. And again, it's just clearance for that extractor. So as long as you don't cut too deep or uh, bash into the other side of the, uh, the uh, breach there, Everything's cool. And this tool likes to run slow because it's huge. So let me just get my spindle into low gear, back gear, down. All right, <clears throat> so kind of looks pretty good. Right about there, zero my Z. So we'll touch off on that, re-zero our X to account for the big old cutter, and proceed to take that cut. About 260 RPM. Okay, so we're just gonna kinda slowly progress until we see and hear contact. There. So right there I'm touching. And it's nicking the very top of my mark. So we're basically gonna cut from here out, like that. 
okay? So, like I said, I'm gonna zero my X. I know I've cut a little bit already, but that's okay. Just gives me a little bit of an idea. So let's go in, just about 10 thousandths for this first pass, make sure everything's good. Some chips flying off, that's good. Sounds good. Right, so that's good. It's going about 20 this time. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, complete that cut. I'm gonna get a little cutting off. Going 20. All right. Okay, now we'll just keep this up till we get to depth. Interference. There we go. So when I torqued it on, it like gave it a little more arc. There we go. So I think that's fine. I'm gonna look through this way with my eye and just see if there's any visual misalignment or anything. And it's looking good to me. So. Just to be on the safe side, I might wall her out like ten thousandths on each side, on the top and bottom. It really sucks to get all the way done torquing on and then the damn thing doesn't close because they got a little bit of interference. So, kind of a judgment call here. It's not going to matter either way. I mean, as far as functionality or safety. Again, I just don't want the guy being out in the field and being like, ah, crap, I can't close the bolt. So, <clears throat> I'll give it five each side. So this time I'm not going to torque it on quite as tight. Yeah, no problem at all. Alrighty, so that extractor cut is completed. Well, here's just one more shot. Reach up close. See that cut. People unfamiliar with the older cone breach systems may look at this and be like, oh my god, that's gonna you're gonna get a, a rupture in your case. Holy cow. Well, that's not correct. The uh, the case sits well deeper than that cut. So that the thicker part of the case, the web, just uh, in front of that extractor rim is still well encapsulated in the chamber. So again, this, all this is is for that big old claw to get in there and be able to pull that, pull that case out when it's fired. So that is standard procedure for these. No other way, really. Okay, so that's the extractor cut. One step closer to completion on this. Okay, I thought it might be neat to see for those unfamiliar. So there's a term out there in the, in the rifle world called controlled ground feed. This is one of the forefathers of that design. So you've got a magazine under here with a spring and a follower that's forcing these rounds up and they'll sit somewhere in this area. 
So as the bolt comes forward, there's spring tension under the cartridge, which shoves it up into that extractor. So here's the bottom of the bolt. The round has clearance here to slip in and be captured by that extractor. So in the action, something like this, the rounds are stationary, ready for loading. Bolt comes forward and the spring pressure of the mag spring and follower force that up into the extractor as it moves forward. It's more like right in here. Controlling the cartridge as it feeds into the chamber. So the, which means you can't just, a lot of guys think something's wrong with the rifles, they'll single load something in there and try to force the bolt. Well, in this case it works. You don't really want to do that, especially with a Mauser. That just damages the, could possibly damage it. I mean, with a soft case it's not going to, but anyway, usually these won't feed at all, or won't go into battery unless you feed from the magazine, right? So, close bolt, fire the cartridge, boom, everything goes off, and that claw rips it back out, and then when the ejector's in there, it knocks it out, <clears throat> clearing, the, clearing the action. So, I don't know, just maybe somebody might be curious as to how, that's, how this all works together and everything. All right, so like I said, we'll be back with updates on this project when the time comes.